Hey, what's good guys? Welcome back to TechSmart for a video unlike any other. I have the Galaxy S10e here, and I'm gonna switch to it for an unknown amount of time. It's a big deal, Ev. Roll the intro. So yeah, guys, this is a video that I've been wanting to make for a while. You guys know we test out phones. Everyone tests out phones if you're like a tech YouTuber, but honestly, I haven't really jumped into a Samsung phone in a long time. I think it's been since like the S6, maybe S5, like real thorough. So with the S10e, the new $750 Samsung phone, I mean, it's got two cameras, finger per reader on the side, 5.8 inch screen. It's packing Snapdragon 855, USB-C, fast charging 2.0 wireless charging at that. And then you got the iPhone XR. I love this thing. Right now I'm using an iPhone XS Max though, in fairness. So I'll be taking my SIM card out of this and putting it in the S10e here and really just enjoying it. Seeing what Android's like in 2019. And actually my buddy, everything Apple Pro, we call them everything Samsung Pro, is switching to the S10 Plus for we don't know how long. So that video is up there in the iCard. I'll leave the entire playlist linked down below and we're going in. So got the SIM out of the XS Max here and we're gonna put it in to the S10. I'm kinda excited. You got six gigs of RAM, 855, camera on the front, no notch. It's gonna be refreshing. Micro SD, you're basically set. And what's awesome about this is I'm gonna get to use the Galaxy Buzz, just really jump into what Samsung's doing for 2019 because it's pretty interesting. I mean, seeing three phones come out at launch, that's stuff first for Samsung. It's only right to take the screen protector off. I've been waiting. It's got a nice size. It really feels kind of like a powerful iPhone 10. That 5.8 inch display, I mean, it's kind of like the iPhone XS Max, but Samsung's just really jumping into it. I mean, the S10's the iPhone XR size at 6.1 inches, and then the S10 Plus is 6.4, so just a little smaller than the iPhone XS Max. We got a button on the side, which isn't bad. You also have a face unlock, so got best of both worlds. Now that the SIM card's in the S10, let's talk about what I like about the iPhone and really just Apple, what I'm gonna miss, and what I'm really excited for on the S10. So really with the iPhone, what I like, I mean, you have iMessage. I know I just lost the bet. Philip Everything Apple Pro didn't say it in his video iMessage is kind of convenient. You get that valid just understanding that someone's reaching out to you that has an iPhone and green bubbles kind of put people at ease. I know it sounds pathetic, but think about it for a second. Let me know in the comments if you agree, if you kind of get where I'm coming from. That's another thing that I'm kind of iffy on with iPhones. One of the things that I'm just tired of, Apple's always given our ratings and you have to almost find the battery specs out from teardown sites. And with the iPhone XR having a 6.1 inch screen, the battery size is only 2,942 milliamp hours compared to the S10, which has a 3,100 milliamp hour battery. So it is slightly larger, but then the XS Max has a 3,100 milliamp hour battery. So you're definitely getting more form for the function. And I did a drop test with the Everything Apple Pro. If you wanna check that out, right up there in the iCard and basically stacked it up against the iPhone XR, and you can find out which one, but surprisingly, wanna see how the S10e does as a daily driver. Another thing that I really have liked about iPhones, and just iOS, since pretty much iOS 7, is the UI. It's pretty simple, there hasn't been a whole lot that's really changed. I mean, there's widgets here, color mode here or there, but with Android, it's gonna just be a fresh start. I know I'm jumping into TouchWiz, but I'm kinda just tired of the simplicity. I want something I can customize. Jailbreaks are cool, but with the XS Max, there's not really one out for it right now. So, jumping into Android 9, full force. And Ev, with the Galaxy Buds, I'm excited to see what that's like. So while AirPods are cool and all, Galaxy Buds are cheaper, and if you pre-order an S10 or an S10 Plus, they come for free. I don't think that's included with the S10e. You let me know in the comments if that's the case. F, the camera, 10 megapixel front-facing camera. You guys know there's gonna be a camera test coming soon, so make sure you keep it locked to that playlist with notifications turned on. Yeah, I mean, doesn't look all that bad. Then you have two cameras on the back compared to three with the S10 and then the S10 Plus, a 12 megapixel wide angle and then a 16 megapixel ultra wide camera. And another thing that's just kind of been a deal breaker for me and it hasn't happened for that long, Apple had the home button for a long time, but with the notch, it's really only existed for two generations. And for me, that's two generations too long. With the Infinity O display, 
Yeah, it's AMOLED on the S10e, but having that hole punch camera in the front, it's 10 megapixels, and Ev, selfies look really good, shutters fast, and what I'm excited for is the Instagram story integration in. Samsung made a big deal about that at the event, and I wanna see if they fix where your Instagram stories and Snapchats look like a potato. It's just text smart if you guys wanna keep it locked. I'll be testing this out for I don't know how long. I just wanna go for it and see if there's really ever switching back. I tested out Android phones kind of all my life. This channel's eight years old. My first phone before I even like got into phones and created TechSmart back in 2008 was the Google G1. I don't know how I got this. I paid all my money and saved up everything for it. Basically gave it to my parents to go get a contract because to get this, I think you could buy it out right back then. This was running Android 1.0. Google's first smartphone, and why I loved it was the QWERTY keyboard. So, F, draw to unlock. Yo, everything Samsung Pro, everything Android Pro. What's the, what's the pattern? I couldn't tell you, it's in my video. <laughs> I gotta go watch. <laughs> and then from there, at age 10, I mean, yeah, I'm 21 now, it's 2008, 2019. This is crazy. This phone has come a long way. It's had offshoots into Xiaomi, Huawei, I mean, look at OnePlus, there are so many phone manufacturers out now, and this is kind of it. Like, this has started from the bottom, now we're here. And even before that, I was rocking a BlackBerry. Like, this was kind of the first phone to jump into it, then I switched to BlackBerry. This wasn't running Android, but what this had was this crazy cursor. So just kind of seeing the customization that would come, and then the touch screens with the BlackBerry Storm. For me personally, the BlackBerry Storm was the original 3D touch phone. I don't know if you guys know about this, but back in the day when phones were so boring, and you can actually physically press into the screen and have an action happen, that was cool. Like this it's phone- It was like was force touch and 3D touch yeah. before it happened. It was ahead of its time. They were onto something, but they failed. Camera. Even autofocus. Like when no phones had autofocus, yep, this dude. one did. Uh, it was garbage though, like complete components would break inside, the camera, the flash would stop working, battery would need replacing all the time. They were on something, but they missed the mark. But still, I remember this thing fondly. Like, And even before that, what if this was still the trend, using a, a wheel or like yeah, a button or yeah. a pearl? Like, the BlackBerry Pearl changed the game. I mean, phones used to be this big and we were happy playing Brick Breaker. This like, was there was no mobile Apple, gaming. Bigger than Apple. Like, this was the standard back in the day. Then Apple came and wiped everyone. I legit remember all the games you could install in these. There was such a third party support for Blackberries. It, it was, was a lot of fun. And then there was Crackberry, like the own jailbreaking oh, community yeah, of Blackberry, uh, dude. Java, Java, Java. Games, <laughs> all of those. So much fun. Dude, it was. Dude, I love this. Trip it was different. Lane. It was different. How are you liking using the S10 Plus? Honestly, nah, it's so hard. Like I haven't even put my card <laughs> in yet. I, I'm, I'm holding the iPhone because my music's on it, but I'm doing it slowly. Like I, it's just learning transferring process. everything is a huge thing. That's the one thing I have yet to do on the S10e. I'm starting that process now. Contacts, everything. I just set it up to where like the gestures make sense, the animations. What do your apps look like? Better. Pretty know, basic, pretty basic, not fully phone customized phone. yet. It is. It it's is. fully customized. That's like my flow. That's what I use on a day. Audiobooks. I like it. All the time in this forest. Walk Heck yeah, dude. That's it's the perfect vibe. How what's your favorite feature on the S10 Plus so far? Definitely this. Every time I look at it, it's just like oh, just how futuristic it looks. Like, is that a feature? I guess you could call it that. Dude, <laughs> it looks amazing. Compared to the iPhone 10R, 10S yeah. Max, I'd say it is futuristic. I mean it's working out. How's we're your in the future? Did you start yet? Dude, <laughs> dude, I am still using the iPhone XS Max, but I'm getting everything set up and transferred over now. It's pretty crazy. So I'm excited to go to the S10e. I don't think it's gonna be a bad switch. I think if anything, it's gonna be like I'm just back at home. But really, I wanna see what's up in 2019. One thing I'm not gonna miss though is Animoji. I'm probably not gonna check out AR Emoji just cause that's not my cup of tea. Another reason why it's awesome is USB-C. Galaxy Buds also take USB-C and has the pass-through wireless charging. So when the buds die, I just lay it on the back of the phone and it charges right through. Not something you get on the iPhone XR or the XS or the XS Max. So. That's just gravy and super convenient. Another great thing about Android is being able to have the functionality of buttons. So that's one thing I'm excited to get into and then the nav bar, you can customize it, you can have them on screen, you can just have them there. So either they're reserved or they just pop up. So you can really customize the screen real estate. And one thing that's awesome is you can get rid of the hole punch if you're not a fan of it and add a black bar. So Samsung is really accommodating to you and what you want this year. And that's what I'm into. So let's check out YouTube 
see how loud the speakers are and kind of wrap this up and then just get back to making the videos. I just kind of wanted to make this so I could fully announce that I am switching to the Samsung Galaxy S10e. All right, so we're gonna play a quick video, see how it looks on the screen, just get used to what reality is gonna be like for the next few weeks, months, even years. We're gonna play some Benly, don't wanna bother you. Just see how the speakers are. Bass is nice. It's got a nice punch to it. Yeah, I think just the first few verses kind of describe my relationship with the iPhone. I don't know how I've made it work for so long, but it's time for something new. So that's it for this video. If you guys are new, make sure you drop a like, get subscribed, and join to become a member. It's super cheap, you get some extra bonus content. Make sure you hit it up on Instagram. It's just TechSmart, and I'll catch you guys next time.